You've heard it before. The world is too full. Too many people. Not enough food. Not enough land. We're told the planet is bursting at the seams. That overpopulation is the greatest threat to humanity. But have you ever stopped to ask, who keeps saying that? And what are they trying to hide? What if this panic isn't about saving the planet? What if it's about something else entirely? Something more convenient? Because when you look at the numbers, when you look at the truth, you'll realize the problem was never how many people are on Earth. The problem is how few control everything. Overpopulation? It's not a crisis. It's the perfect excuse. To understand where this fear began, we have to go back. In 1798, a man named Thomas Malthus published an idea that would shape the next two centuries. He claimed that population would grow faster than the food supply, and eventually, the earth wouldn't be able to feed everyone. Malthus believed that poverty, famine, disease, even death, were not tragedies to prevent, but nature's way of keeping the population in check. In his eyes, suffering was inevitable, and perhaps even necessary. Harsh, right? But that fear, it stuck. It echoed for centuries. In the 1960s, a book called The Population Bomb told the world that millions would starve if people kept having children. Panic spread. Governments reacted. What followed was dark. Forced sterilizations. Birth control without consent. Population control programs, mostly targeting poor, black, brown, and indigenous communities. All in the name of saving the planet. But let's be honest, this wasn't about the environment. It was about controlling who gets to live and who doesn't. So, let's look at the numbers. Not the fear, not the headlines. Just the facts. The wealthiest 10% of the world, mostly in rich nations, are responsible for over half of global carbon emissions. The poorest 50%, less than 10%. Think about that for a second. One person in the U.S. uses more energy, more plastic, more food, more everything, than 250 people in Ethiopia. And yet, when there's drought or famine or forest loss, the blame always seems to fall on the poor, on the growing population, on the ones consuming the least. Doesn't that seem convenient? This isn't about too many people. It's about too much power in the hands of too few. So why push the overpopulation story when the math doesn't back it up? The answer? Control. Deflection. Power. When people are afraid of too many mouths to feed, they don't ask bigger questions, like, who owns the food? Or why is it wasted? Or who's profiting while others starve? The overpopulation myth is the perfect distraction. It shifts the blame away from oil companies, land barons, and corporate polluters, and points it at mothers in Africa or families in India, or children born into poverty, instead of asking billionaires to scale back, we're told to shrink our families, to have less, to be less. It's not a population crisis. It's a propaganda campaign, a way to protect the few by blaming the many. Let's clear the air with science. The UN's own data shows this. We produce more than enough food to feed every human on Earth. And space? If every person on the planet was given 1,000 square meters, enough to grow food, build a home, and live, the entire global population could fit inside Brazil. Not squeezed, not stacked. Comfortably, want more proof? A family of four can grow most of their vegetables on just 200 to 250 square meters of well-managed garden space. So it's not about land shortage or food shortage. It's a distribution problem. A system that lets food rot in warehouses while children starve. The world has what it needs. It's just in the wrong hands. Now, let's talk about the environment. They say population is killing the earth. But the science says otherwise. The top 100 companies are responsible for over 70% of all carbon emissions. Not poor families. Not the global south. Not everyday people trying to survive. Forests are destroyed not by villagers collecting firewood, but by corporations clearing land for profit. Oceans are choked by plastic. Not from slums, but from brands that refuse to change. Biodiversity is vanishing. 
but it's not because there are too many people. It's because we've built an economy that values extraction over life. The planet isn't collapsing because we exist. It's collapsing because of how the powerful profit from destruction. So what do we do now? If overpopulation isn't the threat we were told, it is. What is the real solution? First, we shift the focus from people to practices. Tax overconsumption, not childbirth. Support regenerative agriculture, not factory farms. End land grabs. Return land to local farmers. Make family planning a right, not a weapon. And hold corporations, not communities, accountable. The future doesn't require fewer people. It requires a fairer system. One where people and planet thrive together. Because the problem has never been too many lives. The problem is too much greed. So here's the truth. The earth is not overpopulated. It is overexploited. We don't have too many people. We have too much inequality, too much waste, and too much silence about who's really responsible. The overpopulation myth is a story told by the powerful. So they never have to change. So they never have to share. But now you know better. And with knowledge comes power. The world has enough for everyone's needs. But it will never have enough for everyone's greed. So stop blaming the people. Start changing the system. And never ever fall for the myth again. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the ideas that are shaping our future.